Hey, hello and good morning. All right. So I'll let this run overnight. Uh, let's see if it actually worked. Uh, beginning one, run, two. Okay, so it looks like it worked. Maybe this notebook disconnected. Because we're at two here. So maybe it's still running. Let's see if it's still running. The easiest way I can think of right now is, yep, just go to top, look at this, and Python's taking up all of our CPU. So just one core. Hmm. I would have expected that to be taking up all four. So one method that I did before with this is uh, I split this out into a Kubernetes task. Um, I just made a little Docker container that read the, um, the environment argument for an index. Um, and then it picked up that index for you know, the class of bird and went through and predicted all the audio files for that bird. So then we could have 105 containers running at once, each one for each class. That might be the quickest way for us to get this knocked out. Um, hmm. Wondering the best way that we could run that. I guess uh, the quota right here, the CPU is still really limited. But if I could bump up the CPU to like 64, then I could just run Docker right here on this box, right? Make a quick container, run Docker on this box, and uh, get all these knocked out. Because if we're gonna have to run through this again, right? Like. Uh, Let's say we go through and we listen to those two audio files and they worked out well, but if we listen to more audio files and they, um, well, they don't line up, right? Like this, this model doesn't really prove out to be working well. We're gonna have to go through the same process again and uh, I don't wanna have to wait overnight plus a day to, uh, to work through all of our data. So we want to be able to ramp up a 64 core box and run a containerized task to predict uh, all of these and then it looks like that might be able to run overnight. Like if number zero to overnight, we ran one and zero and two is beginning. Hmm. Okay. So overnight we could predict all of these audio files with a 64 core box. Let's try that. So first things first, let's go ahead and knock that quota thing out. Location is global there. Can I change the location to So request description, let's see, this is just to run a, um, so it's to run a um, rarely occurring and occasional. OCC, oh, I always forget how to spell this word. Got it close enough though. This is to run an occasional um, data processing task. useful to include the intent of the quota usage. Further quota plans. It is unlikely that a further CPU increase. Do, 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 do. 
do. Name, CPU. Huh. Oh, okay. One more time. There we go. All right. We'll come back for the container in just a bit. All right, let's make that container. We have requested the quota increase. Um, cool. So what are we going to be doing here? It's going to be something like this code that we just wrote. Um, and we're just going to need to put it in another file for this. And I bet you we can even do it in Jupyter Notebook. Um, new folder. There it is. Okay. Um, container stuff. And here we make a new file for just going to be a text file for a Docker file. Python 3.6. Let's make one more new file in here. And this is just going to be the, uh, the Python file that we're running. Um, named as classifier. Dot by. And what all the special things do we need from this? I don't need that. I don't need TQDM. Blah will still need to be in there. We need that Nayugi library. So let's move that over. Um, Actually, in container stuff. And make a directory source, move all of our stuff into there. So I just closed the file so that way I could reopen it, but in this directory here. And the reason that we're cleaning up all these libraries right now so that way we can um, uh, that way we can import or install them all during our docker install which is this file here let's rename it rename to docker file are you following along here um, bouncing between a lot of different things but pip install upgrade pip Run pip install TensorFlow. And also we need numpy, so it's I think it's just a numpy. 
Yuki's gonna be there. SciPy. Um, trying to remember what the library exactly is called for this. One from Google Cloud Storage. Where's our install? There you go, Google Cloud Storage. Okay, almost there. So what, we got a container, got our Python libraries installed on it. We need to make sure that we have this directory here. I'm just gonna call it app. And we're gonna run make dir-p, so that way if that for any reason fails, it's okay. And we're gonna let's see. Make sure that we have a user to do all this stuff with. Um, and make our username classy. And let's see, they own that directory because it's gonna be the first user added, so they're thousand for their user ID and group ID. Um, let's see, we need to copy everything in source to app. I think our command will be Python, PYT, and then Okay, but we need that environment variable for the index. Um, I think it goes like that. I want arg, don't know. We need arg. It takes me to the same reference anyway. Arg. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we do use it in little brackets. See, that's how they use it here. You set it an argument that you can pass in from the command line. And then we are taking that argument from the Docker build command line. Um, oh, that does come from build, doesn't it? We don't want that from build. We want that from runtime. We're going to set that at runtime. Just kidding. Ignore all of that. Okay, anyway, that should work. Um, do we have Docker on here? Okay, so we'll install Docker, and then we can run this. Um, have to finish the code, don't we? Need to make sure that Florida Birds is over there. Notebooks untitled Florida Birds dot both actually the JSON file and the H5 file. So move those over to the source. Um, all right, what next? Keep copying this. We are going to have to change one thing now. 
before all the classes were writing to one file, and that's just no longer practical, is it? So we're going to need to make a directory uh, called scores. And we're going to update this here to do a couple different things. One, we're going to have class index is equal to, do we have OS yet? OS. OS.envirron class index. And then we're going to open up that file. Just add in a class and then index in there. Does that look right? Okay. And here we're not enumerating all the birds and doing all that. We're just doing get bird. Wait a second. Oh yeah, because we're passing the file that right. That's right. Get bird. This is going to be the. our bird info and class index is the bird index okay so if we run that which would be something like this um, wait a second let's do this Let's do this. Make scores up here, just like we have app. Just so we have a nice, easy place to mount to. Okay, Docker. Build and we're going to tag this just as classy. Oh, I thought we just installed Docker, didn't we? Hmm. Not found. Oh, we did, but we installed it with the 1K, not the 2K. And Docker is not running yet. Pseudos. Ubuntu 4.18.04 runs what? System CTL, maybe? Um, yes. Oh, and we got to add this user to that group. So, sudo user mod. Um, it's a dash a dash g docker. I want to keep it simple and universal. I think. Okay. Um, I'd have to log out and log back in to really make that work. I mean, not fully. There's a way to get the group to work at runtime. Let's see what that is. Linux add group about logging out. So I could sudo or I could su into the other user. I don't know if you call that a su or what. Anyway, I could do that. Don't want to do that. I'm just going to come back and log in again. Compute engine. Come on. SSH. Oh no, the kernel. Don't restart. It's gone. It's gone. It's alright. I'm going to bring it back. 
the containerized con kernel. That would be better. Um, where are we going? Pseudo CD container stuff. Now it lets us run that Docker command. Cool. And you know how Docker works. It's just grabbing this first line right here and doing everything necessary to make that true and then hashing that value. So that way later on, um, if that value hash doesn't change, if this line doesn't change, then it can just grab the data at that hash point and build on it from there. So in other words, if we don't delete anything, we never again have to download Python 3.6. Um, I don't think. It might update if they have updated like the uh, the minor version number. Okay, things are running. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, where are we going now? It's still installing. Go figure. What are we installing? Is it getting close? Mm. Google cloud storage stuff. So yeah, it's getting close. Um, Okay, so from there we do that, that, and then it runs our container. And yeah, this should just work, maybe. I mean, obviously we're just going to be, uh, we got to run, what? We have four cores right now. Let's check and see if the, uh, the quote has been increased. My new limit is 96. Check that out. Nice and fast, Google. Thank you. So, well, let's test and just make sure this works now. And then if we have uh, some time, we'll try to make this uh, happen. Cool. All right. So what are we doing next? It'd be Docker, run, add in a volume for scores. So pwd scores let's announce the scores and then uh, I'm going to set an environment variable what is the thing for that hmm isn't like just dash E? That's what I was looking for. And let's set environment variables. Okay, it is just dash E. sense because classifier is in the source directory and also we never we never set our work dir it is app got to rebuild it here but nice and quick this time, right? See, 
using cache, using cache. Why didn't it pick up on? I didn't save that file because Jupyter is not running. So. I don't know if anybody else does this, but if you use this little um, nice UI web browser terminal, and then you try to hit Control Shift V, it uh, oh, fire, just don't worry about it. Because um, normally to paste in a terminal on Linux, you press Control Shift V as opposed to Control V. Um, it's mad at FFmpg, which you know what we didn't install FFmpg. Whoops. Um, I should also mount that audio directory. So I'm not downloading crap again. Because I've already downloaded all these files, I guess, haven't I? Uh, slash audio. And save it to the audio directory as well. Um, and then here. This is actually going to turn into an os.system. Um, is our asset ID? Goes out to audio, also asset ID. I think I could have left that designation in there like that. The asset ID and then use a dict here instead of uh, two arguments. But I don't know and I'm trying to just get this done real quick. All right, so we gotta also add that audio directory. You don't have to. Um, You don't have to create directories before you mount them, but it's nice sometimes too, because uh, then you can control the user ID of it and make sure that everything that gets written there uh, is the same as your user and you don't have root files somewhere around there. Oh, this, is like a, this is data slash audio. We're mounting to slash audio. What do you think? What do you think? Um, the syntheses must be integers or slices, not string. Oh, okay. Our class index here. We need to parse this out to um, an int. And for fun, let's print it. build it you know what's funny is I tweeted something this morning about everything starting with a make file and a docker file and here we just have a make file or just a docker file and uh, having to keep rewriting some things because of that where's our tqdm statement that I forgot to take out there we go one more time one more time I think this is going to work this time. Um, where's my print statement saying what? Got to call this, this, this. I guess we haven't gotten there yet. Still loading. I wonder what it's loading. Oh, it's not loading anything. The Python output 
is buffered, so we're not seeing anything. I think it's dash E. Python Docker output. Dash U. Dash U and that command right there will cause Python to, or the Python output to actually stream to your console. Now this time, maybe, maybe. Here we go, Northern Cardinal zero. So it's, it's going. Um, um, and there should be a file there for that bird. It's going to stop again, check on scores. Yeah, okay, there's a scores file. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop everything here. Um, yeah, we'll come back and spin up this computer in just a little bit, hopefully.